Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. It's uh, it's a lot later than I'm normally with you of a, of a morning. I got back yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening from the seminar in Michigan, uh, in South Haven, Michigan. That conference was organized by uh, Holger Neubauer with help from uh, Steve Baisden and uh, contributing also there was Scott Claft, William Bell was one of the speakers, and along with me. Uh, what I'm going to do in this segment today, okay, and again, I slept a little bit later. I actually slept till 5.30 this morning, my goodness gracious. But I, I was and am <laughs> uh, <coughs> just dead dog tired. So anyway, I won't be getting a new, begin a new series today, but I just want to share some, some thoughts from the seminar. This is, to my knowledge, the very first ever preterist seminar in Michigan. So in that regard, it's groundbreaking and it, and it is historical. Uh, that seminar was very well attended, especially for a very, a very first seminar. There, there were people there who openly said they didn't know if they believed in covenant eschatology or not. Uh, by the way, by the time they left, they said they were pretty well convinced. But uh, there were preachers there who knew somewhat of the controversy, willing to listen, very open-minded. I tell you, it was just absolutely great. As usual, you just, you just stand back and marvel at, at the lessons and the beauty of, and the harmony and the unity that is in God's Word when it comes to eschatology. And, and I've just got to tell you, you, you really, really need to get William Bell's last presentation. It was on the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15. But William began in verses 1 to 4, setting the, the context of the reality that the death of 1 Corinthians 15, and thus the resurrection, was related to sin death, a spiritual resurrection out of sin death. Uh, as usual, William just knocked it out of the park. Absolutely fantastic material. So be sure to get a copy of that presentation. It should be available in MP3 form before long. All of the speeches, by the way, I, I gave a presentation on the passing of the law of Moses, John the baptizer, as Elijah and the passing of the law of Moses. I also gave a presentation on the end of the revelatory prof process, the end of the prophetic office that was extremely well received. Uh, it was just really a super, super enjoyable weekend. The fellowship was wonderful. The atmosphere was great. The interest was high. Really, really some great lessons. Okay, I've I got to do something here. I hear from some of you over and over and over again, Don, I want to know what all those books are on your desk. What are those books that you're reading in your research on a, on a regular basis, all right? <laughs> well, the, the, the titles change from day to day with the exception of a few of them. So, all right, I'm going to share with you the books that are on Don Preston's desktop right now, the ones that I'm kind of focused on, the ones that I use as reference books on a very, very regular basis. So where do I start here? Let me start over here to the left. On my far left, I have N.T. Wright's newest, it's actually two-volume set, Paul and the Faithfulness of God. There's over a thousand pages, and I respect N.T. Wright tremendously. I love his historical research. I love his Jewish uh, sets in Leben, that is, a context that he establishes for Jesus, for Paul, and the New Testament writers, absolutely fantastic. I don't always agree with every, every application that he makes, but nonetheless, he is certainly one of the finest scholars in the world today. And uh, another book that I just recently picked up is New Testament Theology, the Theology of the Book of Revelation, Richard Baucom. He has some really, really wonderful insights into the themes and the motifs of Revelation. Now, what's fascinating to me is he does such a wonderful job drawing from the Old Testament, showing how Revelation is drawing from that, and yet, sadly, 
he doesn't make the imminent application to the impending fall of Jerusalem. So if Balcom's book, as good as it is, uh, of showing the relationship between the Old Testament and the New, he fails to see that imminent application of the second axis motif to the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. It's, it's, it's a good book with reservations. Okay, uh, another book that I refer to very, very commonly is the Commentary on the New Testament Use of the Old Testament by G.K. Beale. Dr. Beale does a fantastic job, by and large, of showing you the relationship between the Old Testament and the New. In other words, when we read in the New Testament and the New Testament writer says, such and such happened that it might be written. He, takes, he gives us the Old Testament reference. He even gives us allusions, echoes, to use Richard Hayes' work, uh, that we might not o overtly recognize as a citation of the Old Testament, but he shows how the Jews used that text and how the New Testament writer was applying it. So it's, it's very, very good. One book I've been using as a reference is The Sabbath Under the Crossfire by Samuel Bakioshi, who passed away somewhat recently. And, uh, of course, I'm writing a book on the Sabbath. Let me see what else I've got here underneath. Um, okay. Uh, then I've got some books by E.P. Sanders, The Historical Figure of Jesus, Jesus and Judaism. And I think I've got another one right here by Sanders. Yes, indeed. Paul and the Jewish people. Now, I've got to tell you, as far as giving us, uh, uh, Sanders' work was groundbreaking. Sanders did an absolutely fantastic job of, of demonstrating that Jesus was a Jew. Paul was a Jew. They wrote within the historical Jewish context. And to ignore that is to ignore their message entirely. It's to miss their message. Okay, I have a New Testament biblical theology. By the way, I, I really don't appreciate a whole lot of Sanders' presuppositions. He openly says, well, this story in the gospel is ridiculous. It could never have happened. Well, I don't accept that, obviously. But the historical data is really good. Another one by Beale, the New a New Testament biblical theology. Beale has some really good stuff in there. It's just, uh, it's really sad that Dr. Beale refuses to acknowledge the time statements in an objective way. A book that I absolutely love is Romans, The Divine Marriage by Tom Holland. He just does a great, great job of developing the theme of the marriage, of Israel's marriage to Yahweh, and the impending marriage, remarriage, as Paul develops it in the book of Romans. Now, I suppose the reason I really, really like this is because one of the best books on my desk is <laughs> We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings by some dude named Don Preston. I, I don't know anything about the guy, but anyway. <laughs> but Dr. Dr. Holland just does a magnificent job in that book. Oh, let me see. I've got other books here. Uh, e. Earl Ellis, uh, Paul and His Recent Interpreters. Uh, again, showing the Old Testament background to so much of Paul's theology. Look, I, I could go on and on. I've put up a whole bunch of my books that I've been using for research. I, I love David Powell's uh, book on the New Exodus in the book of Acts, and on and on. I, I just, you know, uh, the, these are the books that are on my desk at the present moment. The books change from day to day, but hey, you ask me, what are the books that you're reading? What are the books on your desk? So that's a little bit of it. I hope you've enjoyed that. All right, I want to remind you that I now have available my 15 lesson series on Acts chapter one, nine to 11, the promise that Jesus would come in like manner. It's now available. This says DVD, but it's MP3. I don't have the covers made yet. Uh, instead of $49.95 plus shipping for the DVDs. These, until the end of April 2015, all right? $25 postpaid to the United States. I, I wish I could offer that to our overseas customers, but I simply can't. But if you're overseas and you want a copy, contact me and I'll try to work with you on the shipping. This is, I've already heard back 
many, many times from people who have gotten the series, and they say it's absolutely fantastic, and we really appreciate that. Okay, beginning tomorrow, Lord willing, I'm going to be, uh, begin a series on the parables of Jesus, the parables of Jesus and eschatology. This is absolutely fantastic information and material. In the meantime, thank you for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Do not forget, please, make your plans to be with us July the 16th through the 18th, Ardmore, Oklahoma, for the Preterist Pilgrim Weekend 2015. Our theme is Dispensationalism, Dangerous or Divine? Go to my websites, get the information, contact me. We've been getting registrations along. The interest is high in this. It is a critical, critical subject. So make your plans to be with us. Thanks again for joining us. Lord willing, we'll see you on the flip side for the beginning of our series on the parables of Jesus and eschatology.